Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Um, it's another Friday Reads, another steamy July day. I think it's supposed to be 93 or 94 and extremely humid today. Yeah, I'm not really wearing makeup anymore except for eye makeup and I'm not drying my hair because what's the point? I walk outside and it just kind of poofs up on its own. So. Here we go. I'm going to work after this, so hence my totally awesome polo shirt. Um, I only have three books this week that I finished. The first one is this one, an ebook. It's Neanderthal Seeks Human by Penny Reed. This is the start of her Knitting in the City series, which is set in Chicago. I always like when something is set in the Midwest. And this one was a disappointment for me, I'm sorry to say. I gave it two stars. It was only okay. Um, the main character, Janie, uh, I think she's on this autism spectrum in some way, it seems like. Um, the author has said, and other people in reviews I've sort of just briefly read through on Goodreads, said that she's nerdy and she's awkward and that's why she is the way she is. But I am nerdy and awkward and I don't feel the need to fill every potential or actual um, gap in a conversation with random statistical facts about really random stuff that seems more like a Sheldon Cooper kind of a thing versus like a, I'm so quirky, I know stuff. Not that it matters, but it was so odd because it was such a pronounced character trait of hers through the whole book. It was like, really? Okay, that's fine. It's absolutely fine, but I just was sort of strange. The main character, the man, Quinn, didn't do much for me. And I felt like the book was about 150 pages too long. It's just over 400 pages in paperback copy. That's too long for a romantic comedy start to a series. If it was really complex and there were all the stuff, a lot of stuff going on, that would be fine. But it's just way too long. Sorry, my jaw itches. Um, it was just too much for me. And I'm going to do a minor spoiler here for anyone. So I will put my hand on when I'm stop. Now she can see it. Put my hand down when I stop talking about it. So the spoiler is that he, the main character, Quinn, becomes Janie's boss. She gets fired the first day in the book, and he is what she thinks is the head of security for the building she works in. And it takes her until about 65% of the book to realize that he owns the building and owns the company. He hired her like two days later to start working for his company and she just didn't get why everyone called him Mr. Sullivan and no one you know, ever used his first name and she didn't quite understand that he was the boss even though no one ever saw the boss except for when he was around and then everyone was all at, at attention more and I thought for someone who's supposed to be smart you're really dumb like this is really obvious stuff here and she has a whole quote-unquote thing about not dating a boss and her ex was the same way, like he was a really rich guy and his his father owned the company she got fired from. And the reason that she got fired was because her ex asked her father to because he cheated on her and he knew that Janie would leave him if she had to, wouldn't leave him if she had to be financially dependent on him. Like talk about a jerk. So like her ex is a jerk. And then this new guy, he's not a jerk, but he's not great either. And it's the same situation. Like. It, so it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> um, I don't think I'll be continuing this series. I, I might check out the second one at some point, like literally check it out from the library and see, but I just, it was a bummer and long. So, oh well, that's out of the way. I can focus on her Winston Brothers series now, which is really fun and excellent. I really am enjoying that. So I need to get back to that. But next up, is Bloom. This is by Kevin Panetta and Savannah, I think it's Ganu Show. Um, let me get a non glary angle. Here we go. Fairly chunky graphic novel from first, second. I love first, second books. This features Ari or Aristotle. He and his, fa or his family has owned this Greek bakery for a long time. They're Greek. He um, just finished high school wants to join a band and move with his friends to Baltimore or something. I'm not, I don't remember where this was set, somewhere near the sea. But he wants to go join this band and he's so sick of his um, 
family and how they're, you know, wanting to work all the time and he just wants to do this thing and he just doesn't know himself really. And then there is Hector, this new guy, who Ari hires sneakily thinking that he'll make his parents calm down and, you know, they won't mind if he moves, moves out of state if they have someone to help run the bakery. So he hires Hector and Hector loves baking. He is in cooking school and I think he's heading towards being a patisserie chef or something. I'm not sure, but he loves baking and he gets along great with the family. They become friends. They get a crush on each other. It's really sweet and a fairly natural developing romance. The end seemed a little quick and a little like, uh, oh, okay. That's okay. Calm down. Like, and I don't know, maybe you can catch feelings and it can be that serious that quickly within a couple of months. It just seemed like for the pace that the book was set out as and for the slow burn kind of summer romance that it was to have him suddenly, I love you and with the family and all the stuff, it was just sort of odd to me, but not bad. Just that pacing seemed a little strange at the end, but a really sweet, a really cute story. Um, I really liked Ari and Hector. I liked Hector a lot. And like a lot of first, second books, it has a muted palette. So this kind of teals and whites and black. But yeah, enjoyable. I think three, three and a half. I liked it. And the last one I finished is a picture book, The Little Blue Cottage. This is by Kelly Jordan and illustrated by Jessica Courtney Tickle. Love that last name. So this was totally a five-star read for me. So sweet. This is a brand new picture book, by the way. Um, it's about this little blue cottage on a bay, and every summer it waits for the little girl to come back and spend time in it and cozy up when it rains and watch her and her family go on the boat and go fishing. And then one summer becomes two summers and three, and the little girl doesn't show up, and the little blue cottage is all alone. But after a while, the little girl comes back with her own family. So it's Nothing revolutionary, but the illustrations are just beautiful. And something that I don't think is going to show up here um, on the camera, but there are, there's a little, like a finish, almost like if it was watercolor, and I don't think these are watercolor, I don't know what these are, but that someone had dragged a fine tooth comb through it when it was almost dry, so there's a little like a, it's like a filter almost, you know, but not. So I just, it made me choke up. It was so sweet. I really enjoyed it. So anyone who's got a little kid in their life or who had a summer house or anything, I think would just adore this. And I love that the girl is not white. That's a nice thing too. And her family is not just white people. So here she is with her dog in her picture window. I mean, how cute is that? She's running into the house. There's her dad getting stuff out of the truck. Maybe her mom is there, but I mean, yeah, it's just lovely, really lovely. Five stars. So I have three books that came into my house this week. Not too bad. Two were from Danny. Hey, girl, that's Benelli Speaks. Um, so she gave me a copy of The Night Circus. I could have sworn I had a first edition copy. Lord knows where it is. Part of me thinks I gave it away. Part of me thinks it's just in a random box somewhere. I don't know. So I have a copy now officially, thank you. And <laughs> keeping in theme with my, who knows what kind of stuff she reads, The Pleasures of Modernist Music, <laughs> edited by Arvid Ashby. This was um, a college book for Danny that they never actually used. She was like, I don't wanna read this crap. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll take it. So here we go. And then I have one book I got from Paperback Swap. This was on my wish list for a very long time as well, and it finally appeared. Kind of a rough copy, but it's The Observations by Jane Harris. And this is set in Scotland in the 1860s. And it's a, oh gosh, I can't read this in this lighting. So Bessie, she's Irish, living in Glasgow. She um, tries to get away from her past and take a job as a maid in a big fancy country house um, outside Edinburgh. And the mistress of the house asks Betty to keep a journal of her time while she's working in the house. 
So while it's partly her journal about her time here, I guess some shady stuff starts happening and it's kind of creepy. And um, that there was a reason why she was asked to keep the journal and it wasn't just for her sake, it was also for, I think the house and the lady of the house. I don't know, sounds good. And then the last thing I have to say today, I am NFNing this, which is not for knowing the way of Kings. So here's the shorter version of <laughs> why I'm putting this back on the shelf. I've never read high fantasy before, never read Sanderson. And I have seen this series specifically, but his work talked about all over booktube and everyone is so effusive. I mean, people who love fantasy love this. People who only read this love this, you know? And I've been thinking about trying to do, get into a bigger fantasy book for quite a while. I was talking with Ramsey at Rajathon, who has a great channel, I'll link him, and uh, Leslie at The Nerdy Narrative. Um, I was on Leslie's channel, I believe, in the comments asking questions. She had finished a Sanderson at, at some point fairly recently, and I said, I left a comment and said, I, you know, I'd like to start reading him, where should I start? And immediately Ramsey said, Mistborn. And then Leslie came out, she said, yes, I was just in agree with him. Perfect. I thought, okay, fine. I will get a, uh, get a copy of Mistborn, which I got last week or week before, finally. This was, you know, a few months ago. And then I saw that they were going to do this storm along that Christy Lewis was hosting. And it was going to be four different hosts. And if you have read it before, you could read along. If you haven't read it before, you could read along. And I thought, you know what? If a bunch of people are joining in, I this might be my opportunity to really learn a lot more and understand the book better and get some backstory and blah, blah. So I started reading it and I was confused AF and it was, I mean, parts of it are good and it was intriguing and I, I was keeping reading, but I listened to the first live show, which is the first tab here. I'm not even to the first tab. This is where I got to page 95. Um, but I joined the first live show and I thought I'll catch up but maybe this will answer some of my questions and I said I got more frustrated and more confused and that's on me so I let this sit there and I thought you know what I should trust my original gut and start with Mistborn and put this back on the shelf so that's what I'm doing so I will get to this at some point in future I look forward to it in some point in future when I have a better grasp of not only his writing but his world building too because apparently this whole universe that he sets up is in all of his books. So there's a lot that is unexplained intentionally. I think assuming that you know already, but some stuff, I, I don't know. It was very confusing. I feel like I jumped in the deep end and then I just stayed underwater the whole time and I couldn't get up again. I couldn't get surface and get air again. Um, nothing, no one did anything. <laughs> this is me. This is my decision. Um, I just need to take it back a bunch because this is so complex and I have nothing to associate with anything at all. It just drops you in this extremely character heavy, really unusual world. So going back on the shelf and that's okay. So that's all I have for this week. Um, I hope everyone is staying safe and um, wearing masks in public if it's at all possible. I know it's so hard if it's summer to get an, to get a breath, especially if you're using a reusable cotton mask. It's hard to breathe through those things when it's not swampy outside, but when it is, it's almost impossible to breathe. So I hope you have air conditioning or have a cool place to hang out and um, that your summer reading is going well. I'm working on book two prize books, working on whittling down my library stack. I had to put about five books in my bag to go back to the library tomorrow. I'm just not going to get to them. They're, they'll wait for me. That's fine. But I have so much that I need to read and want to read that's ahead of those extra throw ins that it's okay. And I'm also going to try, I'm debating, you may see one of these TBR soon. I'm debating late, like late joining in the summer school readathon TBR that Doris at Aldi Books started. And I'm also debating joining in Reading Rush. I missed it the last time and I, I thought I would participate, but I caught the last two days and it's a week long readathon. You know, it's not, I should have started from the beginning. So I'm debating joining those two. 
we'll see. I don't know. This could just be denying the inevitable and be scrambling at the very end to read my book two prize books or whatever else. So I don't know. Anyways, I hope you're well. I need to, ooh, I need to get to work. So I will um, check in with you guys very shortly. Tomorrow, you'll have part two on my channel, but part one will be on Danny's channel, it's Benelli Speaks, is our review of the first half of London by Edward Rutherford, which is the book that we are buddy reading together throughout this year. And I also need to post Never Have I Ever. We played a little drinking game with wine. I'll get that up soon too. So let's hope my internet cooperates this weekend. Lately it hasn't been. We'll see. Anyways, blah, blah, blah. Hope you're doing well and I will see you guys all very soon in the next one. Bye.